previous class, uh, we concluded up to the uh, existence results uh, for the local solution and also the uniqueness of those solutions. In this class, we will talk about uh, how to extend uh, the local solution to a global solution when the continuation is possible and things like that. So, we will start today's lecture with uh, some example and then we will say that what does we actually mean by uh, this continuation. So, let us start. Mm. So, example 1, I would like to have a black pen, example 1. So, consider the initial value problem uh, x dot is equals to x to the power p and x at 0 equals to 1. This is a scalar equation, right? So, we do not have x 1, x 2, x 3 and so on. And uh, p is uh, any um, uh, integer get or equal to 0 for the time being, ok. So, let us call it as equation number 1 and this one as equation number 2. So, the scalar field is autonomous and uh, therefore, inter is not relevant. For any p, uh, for any integer p, we have uh, so for any integer p get or equal to 0, we have omega is equals to r. Uh, if p is negative, if p is negative uh, integer, then uh, we have to exclude origin because then it will become uh, 1 by x p and at x equals to 0 basically it will be undefined. So, we have to exclude origin right and uh, then our domain omega will be r minus 0 or some people also write it as r uh, set minus uh, 0. So, that is whatever notation you want to follow. If p is a non integer negative, uh, if p is a non integer, if p is a non integer uh, negative x values x values are not allowed and now if p is a non integer then uh, negative x values are not allowed and uh, then uh, omega that is the domain is 0 to infinity for p to be positive right and uh, uh, omega is equals to 0 infinity and uh, omega is equals to 0 comma infinity for p less than 0 right. The solutions, uh, so these are possible values of p that we have talked about. Now, the solution of the equation 1, now the uh, solution of uh, 1 can be found directly from separation of variable directly uh, from obviously you can divide both sides uh, by x to the power p and then it will be dx by x to the power p dt on the right hand side and uh, then uh, we can write down the solution uh, of this type um, directly from separation of variable from separation separation of uh, variables variables and uh, we basically integrate uh, from um, t is equals to uh, 0 t is equals to 0 to um, uh, x. So, basically uh, we can write uh, uh, leading to the uh, can be found directly from the separation of variable leading to the leading to the implicit equation implicit equation which is integral from 1 to x y to the power minus of p uh, dy is equals to t something of this type. So, basically uh, you can write x t 
as uh, 1 plus 1 minus p times t whole to the power 1 by 1 minus p when p is not equals to 1 because when p is equals to 1 then this power will become 1 by 0. So, there are two possibilities either p is uh, 1 or p is not equals to 1. So, when p is not equals to 1 this is the solution and when p is equals to 1 then we will have uh, e to the power t when p is 1 right. Now, here uh, the maximum interval of existence that means uh, when we talked about uh, Picard's theorem uh, we said that uh, there is a solution but that is a local solution and uh, it exists uniquely. Now, in this case we are saying that there is a solution and uh, it is a local solution but then whether it is um, extendable or not right local solution but can we extend it to beyond uh, this uh, t0 minus alpha to t0 plus alpha. So, you want to uh, go beyond let us say uh, to another point uh, beyond uh, t0 minus alpha to t0 plus alpha which is a superset of this uh, set and uh, the solution exists on that interval as well right. So, the extension to a bigger interval is basically called as this maximum interval as existence that means up to a certain interval where the solution will keep on existing. So, that uh, big interval is called as maximum interval of existence. So, for this problem what will be our maximum interval of existence until where we can go when we keep on extending the solution. So, that actually depends on this p right here if you look at the values of p. So, let me put in words the maximum existence interval the maximum in uh, existence interval existence uh, interval or maximum interval of existence uh, i max let us call it as i max depends on p uh, in the following way in the following way. So, let us see how it is depending. So, first of all for p greater than 1. So, if p is greater than 1 then our i max will be minus infinity to 1 by p minus 1 because at uh, 1 by p minus 1 because at p is equals to 1 it is um, uh, uh, it is becoming undefined. So, we are saying at uh, p greater than 1 and uh, therefore, the maximum interval of existence will be minus infinity to uh, 1 by p minus 1. Now, for p is equals to 1 for p is equals to 1 then our i max because since we have uh, x t equals to e to the power t e to the power t is defined over entire real line. So, our i max will be the entire real line when p is 1. Now, when p is less than 1 then we will have uh, and uh, p is not equals to uh, n minus 1 by n for some integer n for some integer n not equals to 0 then our i max will become 1 by p minus 1 to infinity right and uh, for p is equals to uh, n minus 1 by n for some n belonging to a positive integer for some positive integer n then our i max again will be set of all real number and uh, for p is equals to n minus 1 by n for some negative integer that means n belongs to z minus then i max will be minus infinity to mod of n right. So, here this particular example tells us that you will not always get uh, a solution which can be extended through the entire interval right. So, you have a local solution now whether that local solution can be extendable or not that depends on certain criteria we will write down as a theorem now. But this particular example shows you that it is not always um, possible to continue uh, to continuously extend the solution so that you reach up to the maximum interval of existence. For example, in uh, for the case p is equals to 1 the maximum interval of existence is entire real line, but um, that may not be always true right. 
So, what is the condition or what are the conditions under which you can keep on extending the solution. So, let us uh, state that theorem, it is called as continuation of solution theorem, continuation of local solutions, local solutions. So, let f be a Lipschitz continuous function on some domain i, I and omega, uh, i cross omega, um, i and omega are closed and bounded, they are closed and of course bounded, bounded and uh, i and omega are closed and bounded um, and t0 x0 be an interior point of i cross omega. Then the solution x of the initial value problem dx dt is equals to f of t comma x and x at t0 is equals to x0 x0 can be continued continued to the boundary to the boundary i cross omega right correct. So, uh, for example, in case of let us say uh, t is uh, uh, you have t axis and then you have uh, uh, x axis and uh, let us say that the domain is rectangular right i is along x axis. So, t 0 minus alpha to t, uh, t 0 plus alpha and then similarly x is between um, um, x some range uh, at to bt. So, you keep on increasing. Uh, so, the, between the, uh, within the neighborhood of the point t0 x0, you keep on increasing this um, interval where the solution is um, existing um, and then you keep on doing that and ultimately you will reach to the boundary. That means, uh, which part of the boundary which uh, you will reach that cannot be uh, said. So, you uh, keep on um, extending the solution that is the continuation of the solution and finally, you go up to the boundary and that means your maximum interval of existence will be i itself right. Earlier it was some i 0 which is the subset of i, but uh, here the important criteria is the Lipschitz continuity. So, if your function is Lipschitz continuous then basically uh, you will get the continuation of the solution. So, you will have the local existence then you keep on increasing. Uh, you keep on extending, keep on extending and then you finally reach the boundary of the um, of the problem. So, the, this is the theorem that we uh, wanted to uh, uh, talk about that if we have the Lipschitz continuity then the continuation of the solution up to the boundary is possible right. Um, So, here basically um, uh, we uh, skip the proof, uh, the proof is very simple, you simply first show that the solution exists at uh, let us say uh, t between t 0 minus alpha to t 0 plus alpha. Now, t 0 minus alpha to t 0 plus alpha, the solution exists up to the uh, t 0 plus alpha. So, there you define a new initial condition and since your function is Lipschitz continuous, you will again obtain a different uh, uh, i, i 1 which is um, t 1 minus alpha to t 1 plus alpha and uh, then you again define a new initial condition at the at the boundary point and then you keep on doing it. As long as you have the Lipschitz continuity, you will still get the local existence and once you continue this uh, bootstrapping argument, you will finally be able to reach to the boundary. So, that is the basic idea behind it. Uh, the proof is very simple. So, I leave it up to you to, um, to uh, look into it and understand. Okay. The next result that we wanted to talk about, it is um, you can call it as corollary. So, let x 
be the solution of the initial value problem uh, dx dt equals to we, we should call it a num number a star so that I do not have to refer, write it all the time. So, it, let x be the solution of the initial value problem uh, star uh, with f belonging to Lipschitz r cross r n. So, instead of having i cross omega, we are now having r cross r n exists globally exist globally globally that is for all t in r if the following uh, is known in advance if the following is known in advance right so what is that uh, xt exists for some t implies norm of xt minus x0 is less than or equal to capital m for some constant capital m positive so, basically the solution of the initial value problem of course, right hand side is uh, Lipschitz, uh, it will exist globally if this uh, norm of x t minus x 0 is bounded by some positive real number capital M, right. Um, the proof is uh, in this case uh, short and simple. So, maybe I can uh, prove this result. So, let us go to the next page. Uh, so, I will try to touch the proofs which are uh, short, the extent, the lengthy proofs cannot be of course covered here. So, I referred, uh, I refer you to the textbook that we have, um, uh, that we, that I have mentioned in the very beginning of this course. So, let us start. So, um, take some constant capital T, take some constant, some constants. Uh, capital T which is positive and uh, epsilon which is also positive. The domain i t cross omega with um, i t defined as uh, um, i t defined as t 0 minus t to t 0 plus t and uh, omega as uh, all such x such that norm of x minus x 0 is less than or equal to capital M plus epsilon is closed and bounded. Is closed and bounded. Then basically uh, from the previous theorem that means uh, this uh, uh, this theorem let us go back. Uh, theorem 3.1 which is a continuation up to the uh, boundary this theorem this theorem uh, it can be continued up to the boundary right so if the solution i and omega are closed and bounded and uh, contains the interior uh, contains the initial point t0 and x0 then the solution can be continued up to the boundary so by previous theorem then by previous theorem previous theorem the solution the solution uh, x t can be continued uh, up to the boundary up to the boundary all right of uh, boundary of i t. This implies that this implies that x at t 0 plus minus capital T exists right. The value capital T 
can be taken uh, arbitrarily large, arbitrarily large. So, that x t apparently apparently exists for all t in R. Right. So, basically if uh, we consider, so from the given uh, bounded condition of the previous corollary. So, from this given uh, condition, we are saying that there exist two constant, uh, we, we take two constants capital T and uh, capital epsilon, uh, capital T and epsilon, then the domain i t cross omega with i t equals to t 0 minus t comma t 0 plus t and omega equals to uh, all such x minus, all such x such so that uh, norm of x minus x 0 is less than or equal to capital M plus epsilon uh, is closed and bounded, right. Obviously, i t is closed and omega is closed. Then by the previous theorem, if you have a closed and bounded interval, so then you can extend the solution up to the boundary, right. Now, if you take this capital T very, very large, so eventually you are saying that the solution can be extended up to the whole R, right. And uh, that is what the corollary tells us. Um, then there is another small corollary. So, this is the end of this proof corollary the solution of the initial value problem star uh, exists globally exists globally if the following if the following is known in advance is known in advance what is that in advance uh, x t exist for some t which implies that uh, norm of x t minus x 0 is less than or equal to g t with g t positive is continuous function on r it right. since g t is the continuous function on r you can uh, we can take uh, g t as uh, so uh, just like the previous corollary uh, we can take uh, omega. So, the proof is very simple. So, here you just have to take uh, omega as all such x such that norm of x minus x 0 is less than or equal to capital M plus epsilon where capital M is uh, supremum of all such t in i t g of t right. So, since g is a continuous function, uh, since g is a continuous function, um, we have it is a supremum and you write your uh, capital M as the supremum of this g t and then your omega which is the closed and bounded interval that is constructed from g t from the supremum of g t and this tells us that uh, this result actually falls like in the category of the previous corollary and uh, using previous corollary we can say that the solution exists globally in this case also. So, if you if you make uh, your solution your norm of x t minus x 0 bounded by some g t then you will get the existence of the global solution or global existence right. And uh, finally, you can conclude um, uh, this uh, portion with uh, another small corollary. So, we have stated one main theorem continuation of the solution I might as well do the marking. So, this is the main theorem for today's class 1 then we have first corollary then we have a second corollary and then we have third corollary. All right. So, the third corollary is uh, of this type the solution the solution 
uh, x of the initial value problem star we will keep star reserved for denoting the initial value problem star the solution of this exists globally exists globally if the vector field f is that f is bounded i e norm of f over r n cross r cross r n uh, i wrote down other way around so r cross r n is equals to capital m is less than infinity right so everything boils down to the point that if your uh, right hand side the fun the, the, the function f if it is uh, uh, bounded then in that case your solution exists globally the proof is really simple you, all you have to write is uh, x t minus x 0 so x t minus x 0 norm when you are when you have dx dt equals to f of t comma x you integrate from x 0 to x so it will become x at t minus x 0 and on the right hand side you will have from t 0 to uh, t so basically you are integrating from uh, t 0 to t on the right hand side so you will end up getting uh, something of this type uh, integral t 0 to t uh, f of uh, s x s d of s and uh, its norm so the norm goes inside and then it will turn into a uh, less than or equal to and therefore this is f of s x s and uh, d of s but this is bounded and therefore this will become less than or equal to capital m t minus t 0 so this is our g t you can take this is as g t so therefore our norm of x t minus x 0 over r n is less than or equal to g t where g t is uh, capital m times t minus t 0 so if this happens then we can go back to corollary 2 which is uh, this one and uh, according to corollary 2 there exists a global solution that means uh, this problem the initial value problem uh, sorry uh, the initial value problem this will have a global solution if the right hand side f is uh, bond, uh, bounded and uh, it is denoted by capital m right so this particular uh, corollary tells us i mean the most uh, the, the most uh, simplified uh, version of the existence of global solution right so to recap we have first of all it can be said that the solution is not unique so to get the unique solution you have to guarantee to, to get the existence of solution we have to guarantee that the solution is uh, continuous uh, the right hand side is continuous if the solution exists then uh, the local existence and uh, the uniqueness can be uh, guaranteed by using uh, picard's theorem now if the solution exists and uh, if it is unique then you can continue the solution up to the boundary using the theorem that we just mentioned uh, three corollaries ago and then we are sort of uh, saying that when would this solution be global and based on which uh, we have stated three corollaries right so the we wanted to uh, conclude up to this part so i will uh, stop here today and uh, i will finally cover one last topic which is um, dependence on the uh, initial data right so we have started with uh, introduction to the od then uh, we talked about local existence global existence and uh, uniqueness results uh, finally we will conclude our uh, this portion of the um, of this course by looking into the results that has something to do with dependence on the initial condition so how initial condition uh, 